Hello everyone. Yes, it is that time once again for more Overlord. Of course, this is actually the last episode of the season, so maybe I shouldn't be so jovial about it. Now, if you watched the last episode, you would know that, well, Shaltir and Ainz are locked in an eternal struggle. Well, it's not really eternal. It's going to be over quite soon. And uh, it's a battle of attrition. At least that's what it started off as. But we all know that Ainz has some tricks up his sleeve. And of course, he also has his wits, which he's definitely going to use to overpower Shaltir in some way or another. Now, of course, that's going to be the main focus of this episode, but um, if we get a bit more of an explanation as to who or what was behind Shaltir's dilemma, that would be nice. But anyway, if you're up for it, then uh, let's get on with the episode. She's full of... Uh, Enthusiasm and bluster, isn't she? She's already acting as though she's won. Mm-hmm. Played straight into his hands. That should be a warning sign to her right there. Now her mind is racing as to think of what he could have planned. <laughs> so he's been pretending to be hurt. And he took the extra precautions and she didn't even bother to fall into some of them. Well, many things that he's learned about her and all the others. <laughs> Was that a lie? As if she had the upper hand. Mm -hmm. And now she's definitely lost, hasn't she? She's letting anger t take hold. Well, and despair. Impressive. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, it makes me giggle. So he's... He's either acquired the World Champion class, or... Oh... Magically altered what class he is. Nice. Well, things have so quite drastically changed. How many of the old guildmates' weapons and items has he got on him? <laughs> He'd planned every stage of this.
And for good reason. There we go. That's where the wooden things are. So basically, those wood things are for him to call in anything that he wants. <laughs> she did scream out a little there, didn't she? Wasn't that on the... Yeah, it was on the statue of Ferencino. His answer to everything. World items exist in this in this world, but do cash shop items. And she can't do anything. There's obviously something that she has left, but... <laughs> so she has to press on forward. Thank you for explaining to what we already know, because we've seen this axe before. He even predicted her losing it and charging. If she can land a hit. Oh, she is actually hitting him. <laughs> His watch. Something that he has been preparing the entire fight. Has he just been waiting for that timer to run down? It means it's game over. But when he has sufficiently drained it a little... Mm-hmm. Now she's desperate. Well, obviously he's got something that can negate the cast time. 
They've already been shown it. Not this one in particular, but... Checkmate. Well, <laughs> shame. I like Shout here. They can't have their uh, little spats anymore. <laughs> Didn't even have the ch chance to think about mourning. He'll come back and tell you. It doesn't seem to have the same preparations in place in case it does come to that. I'm betting it's going to work. They do seem to enjoy servitude, don't they? Yeah, he knows that feeling. How much is left in the treasury? Is she now going to be made of liquid gold? She doesn't seem to be resurrected with clothing. That was lucky. Is she going to apologise for trying to kill him? <laughs> she seems to be jumping to conclusions a bit. Well, she should be able to guess from context that something happened. Mm. How far back does her memory go? Mm. Does she remember getting information from the red-haired girl? I 
I don't think that's quite... Quite what he meant. Um, I think he meant mentally, is she alright, rather than... Is all her body parts fully formed? Is he now seeing them like his old guild mates? Obviously they won't be able to hold a candle to them, but... Is he going to now start his new life and accepting everything, including losing everyone at the, from the guild? He's got a new family now. This bunch of losers. They're all pretty cool, though. Well, maybe not Pandora's actor. <laughs> He's still bearing the responsibility like a proper leader, so... He is a benevolent and uh, effective overlord. Oh. Sebus better not be in any trouble. <laughs> Although it is kind of clever using him to draw everyone out. I'd be surprised if it worked that easily though. <sighs> he had already planned for it. That crystal that he showed them all. Huh. Well, if you destroy it, it this happens. Hmm. have an army of chaff before they get to the uh, actual so they're going to need stronger corpses well that sounds like a Truly evil thing, just wiping out an entire village just because you can strengthen your own undead army. But then again, he doesn't particularly care for uh, good or evil. It's about survival. Oh, the crown of wisdom. (laughs) 
So is he now fully healed and after the uh, events? Ah, he even has his eyes, so he's not blinded anymore. So that passing comment, if they can be healed with magic, was true. I wonder how, f what the extent of the uh, healing gets to. Yeah, it's not like a little checkpoint anymore, is it? Is she another uh, battle med? Lupus? What, like a werewolf? Like, I might be thinking of uh, my own things just based on the word, but. So she's with him. And we're getting some. Imagery. Since his little battle with Shaltir, he's now living in the streets. Hang on, that was the other swordsman as well. Hmm, that was him. Well, that was a chance encounter, wasn't it? <laughs> and he's gained a new rank and admiration. Well, probably true, but they're only pretending to be human. I wouldn't be surprised as well. <laughs> He's worked everything uh, far too nicely. What was that? Gargantua and Victim. Hmm. Are they going to force their own troubles to start to then finish so we can grow in admiration of the fellow humans even more? Gargantua sounds like a giant, or it might just be one of those names to make you think they are. Cannot think what victim would be, though. Well... Considering that I am a big fan of fantasy type genre things, mix sprinkle that with a bit of dark storytelling and hell, why not? Throw in some D&D &D references. Yeah, this is catered to quite a lot of what I like, so... Overlord has done well. That was Overlord episode 13. What can I say? I'm actually rather downfallen about it because, well, now there's going to have to be a wait before I can get to the second season due to my own self-imposed rules. <laughs> Now, of course, something is going to have to take its place, and, well, it's looking to be uh, a show. Of course, there are lots of other things that need to be sorted out. So if you still have something that you want me to have a look at, let me know.
there are also quite a lot more characters in Overlord that I want to get to know and see more of, because I want to see Cacutus in action. Um, well, and Cebus, of course. But now that we have come to the end, it's probably time that I, uh, I sign off too. If you've enjoyed, let me know down below. You can do so by liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, hitting the notification bell so you can keep up to date and don't miss anything. You know, if you actually want to watch more. And after everything is said and done, I really want to show my gratitude to you all. And um, it's been a wild journey. You guys should... Uh, well, you should continue being above adequate. <laughs> and yes, uh, almost 3am, so go get some sleep.